My first experience with congenital heart defects is when I was six years old and my mom went to the hospital to have another baby. Anna Marie, she only lived three days. It turns out she had the exact same heart defect that my son would be born with 30 some years later. Drew has had three open heart surgeries because of it. Kane was diagnosed with his CHD three days after he was born. Things kind of took on a uh, drastic change after we spent a few weeks at home. We ended up back in the hospital and we almost lost Kane at six weeks old. Everly was born last August and she was born with um, a couple CHDs, interrupted aortic arch, and in the past year, she has had three open heart surgeries. Avery is two years old, and when we were 20 weeks uh, in utero at our 20-week ultrasound, we found out that hypoplastic left heart syndrome, that is what Avery has. Avery is still in heart failure. Avery will require a heart transplant, um, and we're waiting for the other shoe to drop because we're not eligible for the third surgery. The heart that is the hardest part of this journey is the unknown. It's just not knowing when the next surgery was coming, when her heart was going to start failing. Not knowing, you know, how long his heart repair will last. Not knowing if he will need a transplant at some point. There's there's days that it, it is a struggle to, to go on with my daily life without my son. I mean, he was the light of my life and I try very hard to allow him to still uh, be my guiding light. I am afraid that um, my daughter won't live to adulthood. That's my biggest fear. Having his life cut short. That's, that's the scariest thing. You know, with CHD, things tend to, they can change at any minute. CHD throws a lot of curveballs at you, and just when we think we're going down one track, something comes up and it changes. I know that I will have to bury my child. It's just when I'm gonna have to bury my child. I feel like we're in a race against time. The last two generations of my family have had children with severe congenital heart defects. I, my daughters are now of childbearing age, and I'd like to be sure that it doesn't happen to them. Some of the most challenging things are things that outside of the hospital stays, outside of the surgeries and um, all of the complications, you know, with her with her medical health, is a lot of the neurodevelopmental side effects. Avery doesn't have a, the amount of oxygen in her blood that the average person has. Avery's got social anxiety and she's got a speech delay. And Fontan patients end up having, you know, liver issues and kidney issues. He has learning issues. He lost a lot of his hearing. He's limited in terms of the exercise that he can do. She has a lot of separation anxiety. She doesn't want to be set down on the floor to play and me walk away to go make a bottle. We can't put her in play groups. She can't go to friends' houses. We're on a medication schedule. We can't spend holidays with family during cold and flu season. And the six degrees of separation with germs and where people work and what they're around that they're carrying that they don't realize the average cold could kill her or make her you know, have to, to get the transplant sooner rather than later. Research for families with CHD 
for my particular family is the difference between life and death. Had we not come as far as we've come with CHD research, I would have not had the 16 and a half months that I had with Kane, and I am eternally grateful for that time. I mean, obviously, my sister, who had the same heart defect as Drew, had no opportunity to live. And now, 30-some years later, Drew was born, and he survives. He is 19 years old, he's a sophomore in college, and he is the happiest kid you would ever know. He's viewed as our little miracle, and he is. Everly's finally starting to meet family and friends, which she wasn't able to meet for the past year. She's very active. Just last month, she turned one. We were able to celebrate at home, so we were thrilled. Things with Avery are great. She's a fun kid. Um, she's our girl, but, but they're scary. I feel so strongly about advocating for children's heart research and for the mission of the Children's Heart Foundation because not only does it help me get through every single day, but it, it helps me keep Kane alive. And if, if he were here, I know that he would want me to continue to advocate for CHD research. I think there's still areas that we can grow in. Like, um, why do so many babies with CHD struggle with digestion? I'd like to see a world where babies don't have congenital heart defects, or they can be fixed in utero, or uh, fixed with stem cells. 3D printing of hearts, and that there's some way to harvest the things that are in their body to help regenerate. That it's not multiple open heart surgeries in order to try to um, repair a child's heart. One of the most common misconceptions of CHD is that when you look at these kids they do not look sick and because of that I don't think it gets the attention and the funding that it really needs from the public. I look around at our heart community and, and Kane's friends and the parents that I have become friends with, some that I would say are even my extended family at this point. I look at these beautiful children and I, I, I fear for them and I don't want to be afraid for them. I want to have more hope for them. And that's where I think that research is going to make all of, all of that future a little bit more hopeful.